Years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how Jesus will come again someday. If back then it seemed so real, then I can't help but feel how much closer his coming is today. Signs of the time are everywhere, and there's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eye upon the eastern sky. Greetings and salutations in the name of the Most High God, in the name of the Eternal God, and Jesus Christ, our returning King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want to greet my family, my friends, my friends of friends, all seed of Abraham, your Muslims, Messianic Jews, Orthodox Jews, Hebrews, Hebrew Christians, or Hebrew Israelites, the non-believer and pathfinder. You are listening to The Signalman. I'm your host, Daniel Signalman. And here at The Signalman, we want to introduce everyone to the way, the truth, and the life, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten our Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us words, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes, you are listening to the Signalman. And I'm your host, Daniel Signalman. Thank everyone for your feedback on our last interview with Sally. Um, I received some feedback saying that it was difficult to follow his thought process or the points he was trying to make. And so in an effort to give everyone a point of view that is different, at least my point of view, based on what he presented, I find that he gave two main or two points that he was trying to stress. Okay, and we're going to get that into today in a very short presentation. Again, if you like what you hear, you believe it has merit, please like, subscribe, share. Please leave comments, whether you agree, disagree, or you think there's a way that things could be improved. Please share. We are all ears and are seeking to improve. Also, um, we would like the program to grow and to become something where many can have an opportunity to interact, engage, ask questions, questions are answered. And that in the end, we're extracting people out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible is clear in Revelations that those that are lost are like the sands of the sea. And for me, that has troubled my spirit. And so in an effort to reduce that number, in the name of Jesus, we have this program. I'm not trying to compete with anybody. Just want to be one of the individuals that are seeking the loss. You know that old hymn, Seeking the Lost, yes, kindly entreating that, that old, old, old song. And so, th like the title says, Inheritance. In Vodosali's interview, he had two stresses that at least I saw. One, the impact of prayer in his life his parents and his grandmother, the impact of prayer and how important it is in his life. In Daniel 
the book of Daniel, we find that Daniel is a man of prayer. He spends a lot of time praying. Secondly, I think that one of the things that he said struck him was Daniel chapter 12, 13, that there is an allotted inheritance, the King James Version talks about. So as we begin, let's go to Daniel, Daniel 13, not 13, but Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, But you, go your way to the end, for you shall rest, and you will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. But you, repeating it one more time, but you, go your way to the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of days. So before we begin talking about specifically Daniel 13, 12, I would like to take us back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 21, 8 through 13. Genesis 21, 8 through 13. And in going backwards, we're able to at least engage in another discussion about inheritance. Um, in this particular uh, conversation, It is Sarah who has a problem with uh, Hagar and Ishmael being around. And he and and Sarah says that she doesn't want her son, the son of the slave, to be a part of Isaac's inheritance. Uh, this is a big deal in these days because an inheritance meant you got all of whatever it is your father had and she knew god's promise to abraham concerning his seed and so it goes something like this and it it displeased abraham because of his son. Verse 12, but God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. And it continues, it says, Isaac, your seed is shall be called yet i will also make nation this the bondwoman because he is your seed so although sarah may or may not have forgotten that she was the one that encouraged to use her bondwoman as uh have you know have a, a child with her and I will call it mine, she didn't understand that God wanted her to have a child from her womb. Now, I say all of this because this is an issue of inheritance. As you can see, God is a God that keeps his promise. And today, in, in today's world, the seed of Ishmael is a great nation. I dare see the like the sands of the sea. And so, um, but of course, in Christ, all the world is benefited, and Abraham is still a great nation, and his seed like the dust of the earth of dust. Here we have God 
keeping his promise as it pertains to inheritance. The next verse I would like to pull out is Proverbs chapter 13, uh, 22. Proverbs 13, 22. Now, Proverbs 13, 22 is a, a passage about inheritance, which many are familiar with. A passage about inheritance that many are familiar with. It says that a good man, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the, the, the righteous. So not just your children, but your grandchildren, right? the inheritance, stored up an inheritance. 